In lesson seven, we're continuing with entering data. We're going to enter some more records into our table. I'll show you how to download a sample database from my website so you don't have to type in all those records if you don't want to. We'll talk about the record selectors, how to turn off the delete confirmation warning, saving layout changes, resizing our columns, and moving columns around. Okay, I'm now ready to type in my second customer. So let's go with Joe, tab, Smith, tab. Notice the customer ID has already been set by Access. It's set to customer 2. Remember, those will automatically count up, and you don't have to worry about what they are. That number is completely meaningless to you. That's just for Access to use internally. Joe is at uh, XYZ Corp, 101 Main Street, Buffalo, New York, 14220. Tab past the country since he's in the U.S., I don't have his website or his email address, and that brings up a good point. I've always been of the mindset that no data is better than bad data. Don't force your users to have to type something in, for example, zip code or a phone number, or even a last name if they don't have it. Unless that's absolutely critical for your business, don't force the user to type it in, and I'll show you how to do that very soon. There's something called the required property. We can force the user to have to put a value in. We'll get to that in Access Beginner 4. But I very seldom force users to have to type in information. Sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes you want to make sure you've got a specific bit of information. But if you don't have that information as a user, you're likely to just type in any old thing, like a phone number like 555-2222. It's better to have that field blank than to have something in there that's wrong. It's easier to go through later and say, okay, which customers do I not have phone numbers for? and then try to contact them by email or mail and get their phone number. But if it's got a junk phone number in there because you required them to type that in, that's much harder to find those. So just keep that in mind as we're building our database. Moving on, phone number 716-555-3333. Number of employees, let's say 500, tab. Discount rate, again, remember, you can either type it in as 10, like that, or you could type it in as 0.1. Okay, either one works. Customer sense, let's say 1190. And while I'm at it, let me fix my customer sense date. I know I put in 1130 in the last lesson just to show you the, the cutoff dates. But the company wasn't even around in 1930. That brings up another point. I'm going to teach you about something called a validation rule. That's coming up in Access Beginner 3. That's where you can say, okay, the value has to be greater than this and less than that. For example, greater than... Let's say 112,000 if the company was created in 2000, but less than today's date. You can do that with a validation rule. And again, I'll put links to these things down below in the links section. If you want to learn about them now, you can go ahead and click on it because these lessons are already made. You just have to get there. <laughs> so I'll type in 112,002 for me. Now I'm going to use the down arrow to go back down to that record and then the right arrow. Just like a spreadsheet, you can use the arrow keys to move around if you want to. All right, just like Excel. Credit limit of $500, tab. Is active, I can press with the space bar, tab. And any notes you want to put in there, bill, him, net, 30, and then tab. That'll bring us down to row three for the next customer. Notice the pencil is gone from the left-hand side over here. So that means this record has been saved in the table, right? The Joe Smith record has been saved. Now, as you can see, once you've got the table properly defined, you've got it built, you've got the fields all set up and defined, it's easy to enter data into the table. Now, like I've said before, we don't want our end users, the other people that are going to be using our database, to interface directly with the tables. But me, as a developer, I like to put some sample records in a table when I'm done building it. This lets me see what the table is going to look like, how the data is going to work, make sure everything's working okay. Even if it's just bogus data, it gives me an opportunity to see the table in action. Remember, your end users will be working only with forms. You don't want them poking around inside your tables. We'll get to building forms a little bit later today. But it's easier for us as the developers to be able to build those queries and forms and reports and see some sample data in there. It's easier, for example, some of the wizards, it'll show you the sample data in the field, and you can say, okay, this column has to be that wide, this field needs to be this wide, and so on. 
Now, for the purposes of class, I'd like to have a bunch of different customer records in here for us to play with. We're going to be building some queries in a few minutes, and the whole point of queries is to display the data in different ways. We have to have a bunch of different data, a bunch of different records in there to see how the queries work. Now, if you just want to type in your own sample data, that's fine. Put a couple of people in there from different states, mix up the data a little bit. Now, if you don't like typing, and who really does, you can go to my website right there, there's the link, and you can grab a copy of the database as it is with all the data in it. I'm going to type in a bunch of data right now. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me type it all in. That'd be boring, right? But feel free to go to my website and download my database. Here's the database page. This is where the link's going to take you. This is what the page looks like right now. It still says in progress right now because it's not finished yet. I'm still recording it. That's what I'm doing right now. But come down here where it says full course lessons page. Click on that. Scroll down. You'll see I'm still in the middle of lesson seven, right? Right there, it says databases built in class. Go ahead and click on that. That will save the file to your downloads folder. Now, depending on the browser that you have, this may be a little bit different. This browser here is Microsoft Edge. Okay, you can open the file directly if you want to by clicking on open file, but you can't run the database out of here, okay, because it's still inside of a zip file. If you don't understand what zip files are, I've got a whole lesson on just working with zip files. It's on my website. I'll put a link down below. But basically, all you have to do is copy this file to your desktop or somewhere else that you save your databases so you can open it up. So I'll just take this file, click and drag and drop it on my desktop. There it is. And now I've got my PC resale middle of lesson 7.accdb. Now I can close the zip file. And let's open this guy up. Now, you'll get the security warning. It says some active content has been disabled. This is to keep you safe and to prevent you from getting a file that might have some malicious code in it. Yes, it's possible for viruses to be transmitted through Office documents, Word, Excel, Access, all those things. So Microsoft disables it for unknown databases. I'm going to click on Enable Content. Okay, that marks this database as safe. You can tell it's safe, too, because there's only a table in it. All right, you can't hide any kind of viruses or whatever in tables. There has to be a form in here or a module or something like that with some code in it. But if you're going to be learning from me, you're probably going to want to download the databases that I build. And trust me, if you get it off of my site, if you download it directly from 599cd.com, I guarantee it's safe. Okay? I've been doing this since 2002. Zero viruses. Okay? 40,000 plus customers. And you'll find the customer tables right there. And there's all of our records. We've got everybody from Alan Watson to James Kirk and Jean-Luc Picard, and we're all set. Okay, so we got some sample records to work with. Funny story, when I did this class the first time back in like 2002, I just put in some random email addresses like, you know, joeblow at yahoo.com. Well, a couple of people <laughs> who actually had those addresses said to me, hey, you used my real email address in your class. So from now on, I will only use email addresses at domains that, I own, like amicron.com and 599cd.com. And there's my actual email address right there, amicron at gmail. Although I prefer you contact me using the website because I get so much email, I wouldn't want to miss your email. So if you want to contact me, use the website. I hope all of the phone numbers that are in here are bogus, although I haven't gotten any complaints about those. So <laughs> people are more likely to fire off an email than they are to make a phone call. Now let's talk about deleting a record. Okay, if you come over here and you start typing something in, let's say, I don't know, Kenny, and then you realize, oh, you know what? I really don't want that record there. So I'm still editing the record. Okay, you can see the pencils there. If you decide while you're mid edit that you don't want it anymore, press escape, it'll go away. Okay, that's if you haven't saved the record yet. Now, let's say you did save that record. Let's say I type in Kenny. Now, the first thing I want you to notice right there, look what happened. It was 17 before. Now it's 18. Where'd 17 go? Once an auto number is assigned, the second you start typing in that first character in that first name field, that auto number gets assigned and it's gone forever. You cannot get it back. Yeah, there's a more advanced way to get it back. If you really want to know how, I'll put a link down below. But the bottom line is you don't have to worry about that. That customer ID is meaningless to you. I get emails all the time from people like, oh, I'm missing some auto numbers. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about those auto numbers. Those are not for you. Those are for Access. Later on, when we start making relationships between our tables, Access will use those. Okay? Now, let's say, for example, I've already saved Kenny's record. So he's saved. Okay? 
pressing escape now will do nothing. So to delete that record, click over here. That's called the record selector. This little gray box over here. If I click there, I've got Peter Smith selected. Right there, I've got Anna Pecor selected. All right, I want to select Kenny's record. And yes, you can select multiple records by clicking and dragging, just like in Excel. Okay, but be careful. It's very dangerous if you're going to delete them. All right, so click there, select Kenny, press delete on the keyboard, and it's gone. You might get a delete confirmation up. You might see this guy. It says you're about to delete one records. If you click yes, you won't be able to undo this delete operation. Are you sure you want to delete? Once you delete a record, there is no undo operation. Make sure you have a good backup before you do any major deleting in your database. Okay, be very careful. I'm going to say yes, and then it's gone. Okay. Now, in case you're curious, you can find that setting about the delete confirmations under file and then options. And then under Client Settings, right here where it says Confirm Record Changes, okay, if you turn that off, it won't prompt you every time you delete a record. I personally like it off, so I'm going to leave that off, okay? That's how I had it initially when I deleted that first record. Then I went back in and turned it on so I could show you the delete confirmation. Just be careful and make sure you got good backups. But if you don't trust yourself, leave that checked on, okay? <laughs> So now notice the next record that I add is going to be record 19 now. Okay, see that? Those auto numbers get used. All right, I'm going to press escape a couple times, and now I'm back to a blank new record. Now the next one should be 20, and so on. See how it works? Okay, don't worry. Don't stress about those auto numbers. They're meaningless to you. This is about the time I usually throw this slide up. Back up your data every night regularly. Okay, I use Google Drive. I basically copy my files over to Google Drive, and they get copied up to Google's cloud server. So it's off-site in case something happens to my office. Okay, it's my database files are all safe. I've got a whole separate lesson on backing up your data. I'll put a link down below. It's important. Make sure you back up your data. If you're running your business out of your Access database, back it up every night. Okay, so back in the database, I'm going to resize a couple things here. That customer ID doesn't have to be that big. First name can be a little bit smaller. You can double click here too. Watch this double click and it will resize it to be as wide as it needs to be. Okay, maybe the company name can be a little bit bigger. Maybe that can be a little bit bigger. State can be smaller and so on, right? Just size these the way you want to see them. And again, remember, we're editing data in the table. So this is just for you. Your end users are not going to interface with your tables. Okay. Let's say you want to move country out in front of the address. You can move these columns around in here. Watch. Click to highlight the column. Let the mouse go. Then click and drag it wherever you want it to go. See that dark, thick line right there? Let it go. And then we just move the field. A little bit easier than moving columns around in Excel. The important thing to know about Access is that it's impossible to mix up data. Like in Excel, you can easily move someone's address, let's say, off of the same row. You can't do that in Access. In Access, each one of these rows is bound as a record. Okay? You can't sort a column and scramble the data like you can in Excel. You can move multiple columns too. For example, let's say I want to move all of this stuff here, right? Address, city, state, and zip in front of country. Okay, so watch this. See, I got the down arrow there. Click and drag to select multiple columns. Let the mouse go. Then click a second time and drag to the left. And now it's kind of back to the way it started. That's how you can move those fields around. And again, this is just a layout change. All right, we really haven't changed the design of the table, just its layout. And this is just for you. Okay, now let's say I want to close this table. So I'm going to click on the close button. And Access says, do you want to save changes to the layout of the table customer T? The layout changes, the moving around of stuff, right? The resizing of the columns, the moving things around. Yeah, sure, go ahead. It'll save that right in the table. So the next time you open it up, it'll look the same way. For the most part. Some things don't save, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> the only time you have to worry about saving changes is if you make layout changes or design changes. Remember, as you're entering data, every time you move from record to record or close the table or form, all that data that you type in is saved each time you move from record to record. So you don't have to worry like a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet. You don't have to worry about constantly saving your work, Access saves it for you. Now that we've got some data in our table, in the next lesson, we're going to talk about sorting and filtering.